This episode brought to you by Virtual Shield VPN. There's never been a more crucial time to use a VPN. Their suggestions that our credit scores might be based on our internet history in the near future. The same way that banks use data like income to judge credit eligibility now is how websites could use internet search history in the near future. I will not let my internet history be the judge of my credit score. That's why I use Virtual Shield. Just go to the link in the description and pin comment and get Virtual Shield for 50% off today. Welcome back folks, I'm Drone Tech, and I wanted to take a quick second here just to thank all my Patreon and Subscribestar supporters. You all have been with me a long time and I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thanks as well to the rest of you who keep returning to check out my new content. If you're not getting any notifications, just check back because I'm uploading daily. Make sure to hit that notification bell as well. Alright, on to Circleback Saki and her pitiful attempts to deflect from the only tough questions she gets during these press conferences. You just repeated what the president was talking about yesterday. You want corporations to bear the brunt mm -hmm. of the $2.25 trillion over eight years. But there are these calculations now that the corporate tax hike is not going to raise that much until 2036. So I'm curious where the rest of the money comes from. Well, as was outlined in detail in our plan, uh, we're talking about paying for an eight-year investment over the course of 15 years. And that, given that the, in, the investments are short-term investments, uh, investments that are temporary, we actually would more than make up for the cost of these investments over time. And one of the most colorful examples that the president used yesterday, he asked if people remembered a bridge going down, but only 5% of the spending in this package goes towards roads and bridges, and I'm curious why that number is so low and something that is being sold as an infrastructure package. Uh, we're actually selling it as a once in a century or once in a generation investment in uh, partly our infrastructure, but partly uh, industries of the future, American workers and the workforce. And there are areas like broadband, which maybe is not a physical bridge, but one third of the country doesn't have access to broadband. Whoa, she's so smooth. I didn't even notice that she completely dodged the question about where the money for this infrastructure is gonna come from or how she avoided answering how this infrastructure bill is actually all about appeasing the far left and not infrastructure. And then on immigration, has the White House considered beefing up border security now that there is video of a three-year-old and a five-year-old being thrown over the wall in New Mexico? Beefing up border security. I, well, there are, there's video now of a three-year-old and a five-year-old. I've, I've seen the video, and I think any of us who saw the video um, were incredibly alarmed by uh, the steps of smugglers, ones that we have been quite familiar with, that we've spoken out about our concerns about. As Secretary Mayorka said, the inhumane way smugglers abuse children while profiting off parents' desperation is criminal and morally reprehensible. President certainly agrees with that. And these kids, I believe, were rescued from by uh, by um, individuals who are working at the border. Yes, but they still got close enough, as you guys are talking about addressing root causes in the region, for a smuggler to throw them over a wall into the desert. And I'm just curious what the White House is doing to stop that from happening. And are you concerned more about the kids' safety or are you concerned about kids getting in or tell me more about your concern here? Kids' safety is, as you just mentioned, the main concern. Well, of course it is, which is why I'm often surprised why some of the line of questioning in here, but... Uh Oh, Jen Psaki is surprised by this line of questioning. Could it possibly be because she's so coddled and protected by the Biden press that when she gets an actual legitimate question, she lashes out like a Twitter or Reddit user and attacks them personally? She clearly feels comfortable in doing so. Whereas if the Trump administration had pulled something like that, the reporters would have freaked out and protested. I mean, that's exactly how every Trump press conference was. And did you happen to notice what was missing from that rambling, incoherent response? response? An answer. What security measures are being taken to stop this from happening? If it had happened under Trump, we'd have mass demonstrations and nightly outrage from the media. Um, in Georgia, talking about the voting bill uh, that was just signed from the governor, uh, community organizers have threatened boycotts on big companies like Delta, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola, Home Depot, in part from some of the information that's come from the president in his last news conference. He said that uh, the bill requires voting to end early at 5 p.m. Um, and, and you've said, and, and some others said, that words matter. Um, the, the bill actually uh, 
standardizes voting hours by counties and adds Saturdays and Sundays voting. And it also allows extended hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So is there going to be a correction It issue standardizes the ending of voting every day at 5, right? It just gives seven, options? 7 to 7 is what it It is. gives options to expand it, right? But it standardizes it at 5. It also makes it so that uh, outside groups can't provide water or food to people in line, right? But it makes it more difficult to absentee vote. Are those but things all correct? Voting on the day of is 7 to 7, and early voting um, uh, it can standardize adding Saturday and Sunday. So my question is, is the tone going to change out of the White House? Or, uh, the tone for a bill that limits voting access and makes it more difficult for people to engage in voting in Georgia? No, that's actually not what the uh, the governor of Georgia has said. Well, um, I think that is not based in fact what the governor of Georgia has said. So, no, our tone is not changing. Wow, that was one of the most petulant, childish responses I've ever seen from a press secretary. Really? You're going to double down on a lie? I am by no means a fan of the Washington Post, but even the Washington Post gave this claim for Pinocchios. Yes, it does end weekday voting at 5, but then it adds two more days on the weekends and extends voting hours. And the water thing is pure spin. What they're stopping are restaurants and bars, are Democrats or Republicans coming in and feeding these people, essentially giving them bribes for votes. Are you seriously arguing that voters can't bring their own bottle of water? This this law is not Jim Crow. Flat out, end of story. Jim Crow laws are things like laws against white and black people marrying. Uh, it forced restaurants to serve either only white people or only black people. And it didn't allow black barbers to cut the hair of white people. It was all about racial segregation, something that's made a comeback in popularity on the left and in the Democrat party. Enough of this nonsense. Black people are perfectly capable of getting IDs or planning their day to vote on election day or two of the extended hour days on the weekends. And the majority of Georgia agree with me. 77% of Georgians support voter IDs to vote, which includes 67% of Democrats. This is another attempt by Democrat state media to manipulate black Americans with fear, constantly trying to convince them that they're still living in a Jim Crow America. It's an insidious lie and it needs to stop. And apparently, according to Eric Erickson, Jim Crow 2.0 is a coordinated talk Talking point. A left-wing group tied to Stacey Abrams bought the website several weeks ago. And now even Joe Biden is using the talking point in his tweets. It's a lie that I could see injected into this country by countries like China, who have a lot to gain by dividing this country by race and politics. I guess the Democrat Party and the CCP have a lot in common. Probably why China recruits and plants all of its spies in Democrat strongholds like the San Francisco Bay Area. That's all I have for this one. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.